Hey everybody out there in Chicago land, this is Matt Kassane, and uh, today I am tracking down one of Chicago's very first original comedy clubs out in Elmhurst, Illinois. It went by the name of Who's On First, so uh, hang out with me. Okay, so um, we're here in Elmhurst, Illinois. I'm actually in the parking lot uh, across the street from where Who's On First. You can see there's a Starbucks right there. That's exactly where Who's On First was. And back here in this area, um, you can't see it behind the trees, it's Salt Creek. And it used to flood all the time, I guess back in 1987. It was uh, declared a disaster area actually by President Reagan because it flooded so badly. And I was, I was actually there, I was home from college from University of Maryland, uh, helping uh, one of my buddies uh, that lived right, right over there. And um, the whole area was so flooded that we were in a raft, we were actually in a rubber, rubber raft with oars. Um, just floating around and, and paddling around the whole area. But uh, yeah, this is where uh, Who's On First was. Um, and they had all the big comedians from the 80s and early 90s would play there. Jerry Seinfeld, Roseanne Barr was there, Richard Lewis, Jay Leno. They would all come by they want to play Who's On First because it was sort of this legendary place. It was run by a comedian by the name of Ted Holum. Uh, and Ted's still around. Uh, very funny guy, very nice guy. Um, and uh, I'm actually hanging out in the parking lot, if you can see right there, of Max Golden Pheasant. And uh, Max is a uh, another legendary place here in the Chicagoland area. Uh, they're always they're always ranked way up there and voted uh, very high, sometimes number one, for having the best hamburgers in the whole area. Going around to the back, uh, I have a soft spot in my heart of uh, for uh, who's on first. It was back in the February of 1989. It was the very first stage that I ever did stand-up comedy on, and my buddy Joe was in the audience. He came with me and uh, for support. And I got up there. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I do remember rehearsing for weeks before that. Um, this Bruce Springsteen routine that I did about how you would be in your car and a Springsteen song would come on and you would. You would really want to, you know, you know, scream like Bruce did, and then I tried to do this really weak Bruce impersonation. I can't even remember. Born in the USA or something. I don't remember what it was. It was a bad bit, um, and I, I was panic stricken. There was probably like ten people, maybe at the most, in the audience. Uh, but yeah, that's where it was, right there. It's a Starbucks. It's, uh, yeah, you know, it's the funny thing about it. I was talking earlier about how the. Uh, the, the whole area would flood around here, including Who's On First. Got a plane going over. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, who's On First would flood all the time. And so it would be closed for like a month, and you would go back in there, and you'd go hang out in the green room, you know, to, to, waiting to go on stage, and you could see the different water lines, like, oh, how much did it flood this time? Oh, it got up to about a foot and a half, you know, and so it was pretty funny. And then on Sunday nights, um, before I started doing it, all through the 80s, it was hosted by this comedy team called Steve and Leo, um, Leo Benvenu, Leo Benvenu, I can't, seriously, dude, you can't even talk. Leo Benvenuti and Steve Rudnick, and they went on to become very famous uh, screenwriters in Hollywood. And they did Space Jam and and did Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell. I actually interviewed, uh, I actually interviewed uh, Leo a few years ago. Very nice man. Yeah, this is the back of the parking lot. Um, not much to see anymore. I guess they figured out a way for it to not flood as, as much um, as it did back in the old days. Um, but yeah, there it is. And eventually, Who's On First eventually got bought by some other guys, and they turned it into a place called Fun Seekers. And uh, it was still a comedy club, and um, it still went on for a few more years. I think they eventually closed around 95, 1995, 1996. And um, like a lot of the clubs that were kind of like big in the 70s and 80s a lot of them didn't uh didn't didn't do that well in the 90s uh who's on first and the comedy womb and the comedy cottage and the last laugh they uh all sort of went by the wayside so anyway just a little walk down memory lane something that i actually um was involved with for a few years and um I do recommend if you can find it, if you can't find it at your local bookstore like Barnes & Noble or, or at the library, uh, pick, pick up this really cool book online like on Amazon. It's called Stand-Up Comedy in Chicago, 
uh, written by a couple of friends of mine, uh, Bill Brady and Vince Vaselli. Uh, it's a great book, and I'm in it. I think I'm on page 98, by the way. I'm in it under the uh, Who's On First section because it was the first place I ever did stand-up comedy. And, um, yeah, it's a good book. It, it's got, like, a whole story behind the early days uh, of uh, comedy in Chicago and Mr. Kelly's and some of these legendary uh, comedians like Tom Dreesen and Marshall Warfield. And uh, there's also another... Um, a documentary that was put together by a gentleman by the name of Michael Alexander that I helped out with, and uh, it's called Laugh Till You're Winded. Um, I'm not sure if it's up online yet, if it's uh, if it's available to the public, but I know that he had been working on it uh, quite a bit over the past couple of years, so hopefully that'll be coming out soon, too. All right, guys, uh, just a little comedy history lesson for you. Take care.